Right. Good afternoon, all. Um, I thought I'd get things uh, kicked off and just uh, get the introductions underway while everyone filters in. Uh, firstly, thank you for coming. Um, you know, I know these are sort of interesting times, and I hope, you know, in light of that, we're keeping well or as, as well as we can be at this time. Um, I don't know about any of you, but the um, permanent working from home malarkey seems to starting to be feeling a bit normal now. Um, and I have two young kids in the house, so um, I think that's saying something. <laughs> um, Perfect. So uh, you, some of you may have noticed I'm flying solo today. Um, Tom Jepson, one of the directors at Footprint Digital, was meant to be here with me. Uh, don't worry, he's not ill. He just couldn't be available for this webinar. So you are stuck with me. Um, <clears throat> so firstly, thank you for coming. As I said, this is one in a series of online webinars that we've been hosting over the last um, week or so. Uh, we did three last week, um, which are all available on our YouTube channel and the website. I'll share the information later on. Um, what we're trying to do with these webinars is just to help um, reduce or demystify areas of uh, confusion or other factors um, because you know, fundamentally the times at the moment are relatively confusing. Everyone will be encountering things that they've not had to before. So we were hoping that these series of webinars will help people navigate certain areas within that. Uh, last week, we covered general approaches and ways that digital could be used to, to support uh, businesses at this time. We also covered remote working um, and how you can support your staff at this time because, you know, for many organizations, remote working um, will be very, very alien. Um, and then on the Friday, we also covered, we did more of um, an agency focused piece on employment and what agencies need to know, uh, as well as financial stuff and bits as well. We had uh, Gary White um, from Aspen Weight and White's and accountant come in and give us his valuable insights. Um, so that's all been kind of you know, great content. Um, everyone that's come to it has gave some really good feedback so far. We are actually repeating the uh, supporting remote teams content tomorrow, and we are, uh, all things going well, be having a further piece on Friday, again, with a slightly more business-focused um, managing businesses at this time. So uh, do tune in. Um, I will drop the, the links in at the end. Um, or maybe Tyre, who's helping me in the chat, may do so as well. So if you do need time posting, um, that will be there. If anyone does get disconnected or if the signal does break up, which slight health warning has been happening because, you know, who would have thought the internet's a bit busier at the moment. Um, these recordings, or this is being recorded, it will be placed on live, uh, online afterwards. We are live streaming it and we will be giving these slides too. So you won't miss out if you do go. Um, now, as you can see, there is a the live chat on the right there. Um, if you've got any questions throughout, please drop them in there. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, some people haven't dropped questions during the session, but have followed up via email afterwards. Um, we will answer every question that we get sent in the best way that we can. Um, so drop them in there. If you are on YouTube, um, if you're streaming it, if you're not within youtube.com itself, you click on the video title, you go through to our live stream page, which will have the live chat. And then we also have the live chat, uh, people moderating the questions there too. So um, plenty of methods. Um, to get in touch and speak throughout this um i will give some time at the end for q and a's so you know but if any come up during the talk just drop them in so today's session um <clears throat> feels a bit pertinent at the moment given the events and training and face-to-face -face indus industries were hit probably the hardest first and one of the questions we've been asked the most is how do we move uh this kind of content or these kind of transactional things online so Today's focus is some tips, tactics, steps to move um, this element of your business uh, to the digital world. Um, so I'll be running through the process end to end as best I can. So there's quite a lot of content to cover in a relatively short space of time. So if you do feel like I gloss over any kind of key points or there's anything you want to know more, as I said before, make use uh, of the live chat, pick my brains while we can. So assuming they're all happy, we'll get kicked off. Um, actually, I think we're nearly got a full house turned up. And um, yeah, on the list of uh, attendees, there's some familiar names and those not familiar. So yeah, great to see you all. Um, let's get started. So first things first, when we are talking about moving content from the offline world to the online world, one of the things that um, we're kind of stressing to people first is, is taking a bit of a break and going, okay, consider what it is you provide when you're face to face with your audience or your customers. Um, because, you know, the essence of that transaction is what needs to be brought online. We won't often be able to recreate that experience in full. So we're, we're kind of saying to people, well, first, let's consider that. And how can we do that? There's so many steps. But the first one that we're asking people is to consider, well, what makes working with you um, memorable? 
you know, what is it that they take away and keep afterwards? What parts do they remember? Is it that you offer a new take or a new perspective on a particular area or challenge? You know, hopefully any good speaker or um, any um, you know seasoned professional should be able to do that. Um, is it the expert knowledge that you give? Are people coming to you just because they need your information? Um, a great, again, a great method, a way of communicating. Um, or is it something about your delivery of content? to people that, that makes you memorable? Are you different from the others? Are you less stuffy? Are you more engaging? Um, it, you know, what is it about yourself? I could have called this what makes you awesome, which sounds a little bit fluffy, but essentially this is that opportunity to work out, okay, well, this is why I'm good. So this is what ultimately needs to come with me online. Then what about these transactions provides the most value? Is it the experiential? So, you know, at the moment, there's a lot of people confined to, uh, well, homes, uh, limited spaces for, for a relatively long period of time. So entertainment and experience has never been more important. And that's not just limited to the entertainment industry uh, or arts uh, specifically. Um, sometimes people just want to tune into this kind of content because they want to hear another voice or interact with someone else. So is that the value that you're giving? Probably. Uh, is it that you're enabling them to do something as a result of this interaction? So is it, are you giving them some knowledge? Are you giving them a tool? Are you helping them um, overcome a problem? Um, because that is real value. Because if they can do something better um, as a, you know, a consequence of seeing you, that's perfect. Um, but then what are you going to inspire them to go on and do next? Um, because again, if you can inspire someone even a little bit, again, great value, it makes people come back. Um, bringing this content online does require a certain degree of, you know, people remember it, tell people about it, take stuff away from it. So again, if what they leave with is a bit of inspiration that they pass on to others, we all need a bit of that at this time, right? Um, and then what does your customer need to succeed after that interaction? So assuming that um, whatever you're giving them is something they can take and use and do things with, what is that? You know, do they need a recording of the session? I've already said before, we're recording this. We're also live streaming it. It will be available. Do they need a selection of resources to continue to self-learn? Because, you know, these kind of interactions, you know, the 30 minutes or so we'll be spending today won't be enough, um, you know, to give you everything you need. There will be some resources in here that you can use uh, in your own time. Um, or do they need takeaway action? So you could call this homework. And I'm only saying that because my kids are now being schooled at home. I'm much more familiar with that. But you know, what can you do to help them continue the learning after that interaction has finished? <coughs> um, and then we'll break the the kind of the interaction down a bit more and kind of work out, well, from a visual perspective, you know, do you have a presentation that people need to see? So this webinar is built around my presentation, these slides here. Without them, you would just be seeing my talking head, which would probably be less engaging, I would imagine. Are you demonstrating something that needs to be made clear? So I kind of liken this to you know dance teachers, musicians, um, many things like that. They may need to see, um, you know, footwork or you know fretwork on a guitar or something similar um so just consider that now why i'm asking people to think of this is more how do we then transfer this content online if you're doing a guitar lesson and your camera's six feet away from you and they can't see what you're doing people won't get what they need and I, everyone that's delivering any kind of training or tuition or consulting is going to have something to that effect um and then do they need to be able to make eye contact and i don't mean literal eye contact i mean do they need to be able to look you in the eye and see or or actually see you looking at them is that part of the interaction that is important and then it's from the same perspective or from the oral to perspective so what do they need to hear um presumably they need to hear you clearly but that's not always the case and again that will impact the equipment you need and the platform that you use but you might also have music um or something else um dance classes and various are, are starting to happen in people's living rooms now. Um, Zoom has a feature that enables you to stream your laptop's audio to people at the same time. This could be incredibly useful or not essential if you're trying to offer that kind of surface. So you do need to be really uh, competent of that. Um, and the whole point of running through each of these steps is kind of helping you break down what it is that you need to pull online. So we'll come to the platforms in just a second. But the thing that um, I'd like everyone to reflect on, albeit briefly now, is what gets lost when you put a screen between you and your audience? Um, arguably, in some instances, quite a lot. You know, it's hard to substitute um, human interaction, especially if you are more of an extroverted character and you do like that. But I joke, you know, even introverted people still need degrees of interaction and interaction via the medium of webcam just isn't quite the same. However, I would argue that whatever you feel that you may lose as part of this, um, it's still not enough to stop you doing this process because put it another way we don't really have a choice 
at the time being. And I believe that we're quite robust and adaptive as, as, as creatures. So, you know, whatever you lose is not enough to stop you from doing it. So I would really get you to, to try. Um, we all probably been exposed to visuals like this at the moment. This is a screenshot from Zoom. Uh, I'll talk about Zoom more in a second. This is a how a company meeting takes place now. Um, this is also how family gatherings get together and various other things. And I would argue that this kind of screenshot will soon become kind of the meme of our time, really, you know, the time when interaction was done remotely. Um, but this can work just as well um, as any others, because it is probably one of the next best things we have at the moment. Um, just as an aside, actually, if you do share anything like this, you may see the Zoom meeting ID at the top of this image has been blocked out. Um, Boris tweeted one from the cabinet the other day where he had the ID uncovered. If you do ever do that, anyone else can join your meeting. And I don't think the cabinet want people gate crashing their Zoom conference. So just be mindful of bits like that. There is a steep learning curve for all of us now. So anyway, we, we hopefully we've got a bit more of an idea of how we can bring our content online or, or what elements we need to bring to it. But now I want us to just consider what do we hope to gain from this activity, from these actions? Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to keep a you know a community engaged? Are you, you know, do you have people that pay subscription fees that still need to be getting content through this time? Um, get that in mind because primarily the big distinction here is, you know, if you need people to be paying you you know, and you need to be taking money over this time, that needs to factor in into the platforms that you do pick, you know. At a minimum, you can bring PayPal online and you can just ask people to pay directly into PayPal. But if you're trying to manage this kind of thing from a long-term perspective, trust me, it can be more trouble than it's worth um, and it can be a challenge. Still, it's better than nothing, but some of the options that I'll be talking about now have paid for and monetization options, which do link in better. So um, what platform are we going to use? Um, I can't cover them all because there are tons. <laughs> so I will cover a handful of them and give you a few more other options. And hopefully by the end of this, your mind will be starting to be wondering, OK, I need to be checking out this, this or this. So Zoom Zoom is probably the most ubiquitous um, piece of software at the moment. Um, if anyone has checked their stock prices, it has soared. So they are they're well, financially probably enjoying this moment in time, um, but when you get to use Zoom as a platform, you start to see why people have turned to them. Um, because from a free tier, um, you can experience one-to-one -one meetings and host uh, meetings with up to 100 participants. Um, now, there's a slight limit on that. If there are meetings of any more than three people, they're limited to 40 minutes. But this is incredibly generous um, offering for free, essentially. Um, you can also share your screens. You can enable people to join via telephone. And you also can share computer audio to the meeting. So as I mentioned before, if um, you need to be giving them music or something additional as part of that experience, you can do that. Now, these some of these limitations here, some will be around recording and how many people you want in a meeting for a period of time do start to push you into paid tiers. It's not ridiculously prohibitive to jump onto that with them starting from 11 99 a month. Um, I must just stress, we're not affiliated with any of these software packages. We're just giving you an idea of the ones that we've found useful or heard that others do. So just bear that in mind. Um, but the potential uses for Zoom meetings, one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting, um, exercise classes, performances, pubs. Um, if you don't believe me, search for Corona Arms. Um, they were featured in the Evening Standard a few nights ago. Um, you really can take a pub digital, it seems. Uh, and then also workshops and other kind of engagements. It, I mean, realistically, it's kind of limited by what you want to do um, in an unstructured way. Now, for webinars and things like this, you do you, what can be really useful is a more structured kind of package and offering, which is Click Meeting. So we're actually using Click Meeting today. Um, we actually picked this because it's one of the most cost effective um, webinar platforms out there. It's got a ton of features. Doesn't quite give you the free tier that uh, Zoom offers, but it does give you a seven day free trial so you can get, become acquainted with it. You can host free and paid for webinars. So the paid for part is really important if a lot of your content does need subscriptions or you do want people to pay the ticket price for the organizers, for the, for the talent, for what have you, that's that can be done there. Um, and you can also use things like live question and answer functionality. You can have interactive whiteboards. Um, I won't be demoing those today, but they are very useful. Um, and you can also record. So this is recording and you can live stream and this is also being live streamed um, to YouTube as we speak. Um, and other things it can take off your lap is it'll handle the sign up and the invite process. It can automatically follow up with attendees and it can do some other bits. And there's a degree of customization to make it fit your brand. And it does have paid tiers. So, um, you know, if you want streaming capability, it's 30 pounds a month. 
for 25 attendees and then it scales from there um and it's great for webinars it can do small conferences but actually i think workshops and brainstorming can be really good as well this interactive whiteboard functionality um can be very very handy so don't overlook that for this as well right so the next one some familiar ones you've probably i would be willing to guess that most of you have maybe seen or heard of facebook or youtube live streams before um they're incredibly flexible and incredibly free which is very useful um and they do let you go live you know anytime in almost any place you know with support for mobile and desktop which can be very useful um you can also stream via other software um which i'll come on to in a bit can can help with some more broadcast quality uh, productions um and it also lets people ask questions and comment on in live and whatever you record or stream, you can there share that content later on because so much of the value in a web broadcast is what people then watch or do later on. It's not just the in the moment kind of thing because your audience at that time may be limited, but people will tune in afterwards. Um, just a minor health warning. I say anytime, if you want to start on a YouTube live stream, make sure you try and create your channel 24 hours before you intend to start recording um, just because they need to verify you and make sure you're not going to spam them basically. Um, and then potential uses, you know, if you've got groups or meetups, they can kind of tune in and ask questions. I would argue that live streaming can replace kind of daily or weekly social content. It doesn't need to be a post. Can you just set the live stream for 30 minutes? You could do. Um, and as I said, broadcast quality content through third party software that I'll talk about shortly, which is very good. Um, <clears throat> right. This next one you should all be familiar with because I would imagine everyone's booked through Eventbrite to come here. Um, the reason why we're covering this is just to sort of you know, kind of cover the basics, really. Um, it lets you host um, events or sorry, organize the hosting for events. It covers your ticketing and where the event is free, the hosting is free and the ticketing is free. And it's quite a robust service for that. You can create your own event pages. Um, and then if you start introducing payment, Eventbrite's payment process can then be utilized through your own website or directly through their platform and app, which is really, really useful. Um, Paid for tickets, people start to have to pay commission, um, which kind of makes sense, um, which can either be absorbed within the ticket price or you can ask people to pay on top. Um, so a £10 ticket will cost £11 and a penny. Um, so you can add some transparency in how you want to do that. Um, but also as an event organiser, you do have some app and features that can help you run the event and just get more stats on how it goes, which can be very, very useful. In terms of other features and functionalities, though, it is a pretty straightforward ticketing platform which is what we'd suggest you use it for so next one uh wix a uh, bit of a random one in this in the context but i'll explain why in a second it's i mean wix is best known for websites some of you may even have wix sites as it stands um wix is very much the entry point for for most people into the web world or can be because well it's cheap and really easy it's not typically something we'd, we'd push people to 100 percent because from a long-term perspective it's not always the best platform but at this time um the long-term perspective is almost null and void i would argue um because people need to act now um, um, and when you can create an e-commerce website, so an online shop which can sell things and the cost to you for setting that up is £13 a month, um, you can't really argue with that. Um, but why it's important with this is, well, you can designate members only content. Um, so if you do want to limit what content people see, unless they pay you, you can do it via that. Or you can sell digital downloads, so PDFs and other bits of pieces of content from their online store, which is very good for people who want to you know, sell lessons and then onward tuition in that way. And I would argue that as a platform, it is probably one of the quickest and easiest ways of launching our website with little to no previous experience. So it is definitely worth considering. Um, and, you know, if you're looking to sell ebooks or written content, it's great. Any hosted content tiered on membership levels. Um, and it's great for teachers and tutors wanting to limit access to lessons. And that's some of the advice I've been giving out in the last week. And people seem to be finding that really useful. Cool. And the last one just in this little stretch is Patreon. Um, Patreon is a strange one. I think if anyone's familiar with podcasters, bloggers or YouTubers, they will have heard of Patreon because you know, it, it's a good way to monetize that kind of media. Um, if you're not a blogger, podcaster, YouTuber, etc., it probably won't have passed you by um, or it might not be obvious as to why you need it. But the, the main reason why I'm suggesting we kind of just look at that is it lets you monetize content easily and kind of lock content off to people unless, you know, they pay a recurring tier of access. So, you know, if you want people to subscribe to an exercise class or a membership scheme that costs X per month, um, then they can do that. And you only actually um, have any money taken from you from Patreon when um, 
you know, people starting to purchase. So it costs you nothing unless you're earning, which is quite a handy way of doing things. Um, and, you know, people that use it, authors, bloggers, journalists will quite often use Patreon to kind of support themselves. Um, you can also host tutorials and lessons. It will take donations. Um, and if you've got any kind of community already, I would urge you to check that out because in these times it could be another good way of generating recurring revenue. So there are many more and I have run through those really quickly. So I will stress, you know, I will, we will host the slides separately as well as this. So if anyone wants to go through in their own time and review the content that's there, you can do. Um, just a very quick brain dump of some other elements here. Um, these are some other websites that we would suggest you look at that can help get you started. Um, a really, really interesting one that I've just got on board with recently is hopin.2. Um, they host online conferences and I've got a feeling we'll be seeing that a lot more. Uh, in the summer um, and they are trying to replicate a kind of con conference feel so separate breakout rooms separate streams and tracks and various like that except that you're not quite getting squeezed for sponsor uh, for you know by sponsors and, and stands in the same way that you otherwise might have so um, go and check out some of those it is worth looking at right um cool so equipment and software uh, hardware and software that you need again this this is a potentially massive area but i just want to get everyone thinking about what their options are um first one is and often i would say how most will end up utilizing is the onboard camera and microphone so um for example i'm recording this through the uh, camera on my laptop um not the best webcam in the world but arguably not terrible, perfectly serviceable for what we're doing now. Um, and, you know, very often uh, laptops will have onboard mics as well. And the quality may be variable on that, but it is a minimum viable way. I would also say, you know, don't um, undersell the value of a smartphone, particularly a phone's camera um, can be very, very powerful for this. So if you can't get hold of a webcam and an external microphone, don't worry, you probably have the equipment you need there and then. So headphones are a pretty essential part of things. I'm wearing some Bluetooth headphones now, primarily because you don't want the audio coming back into your microphone because that can ruin the experience. Um, I like Bluetooth because I can move and I tend to move and shuffle when I talk and it just stops me getting tangled in cables. So have a look at that. And some of the really good Bluetooth uh, microphones, uh, headsets will come with their own mics as well, which can do what you need to. Now, if we want, if you need to or want to start pushing the quality and boundaries even more, would urge you to look at an external webcam. There are numerous ones out there that can offer 4K or higher resolutions than that, so they're worth looking at. Um, the link there um, that you can see, that bit.ly link, that gives you a bit more idea, has, has a real good range of um, uh, cameras from sort of sub 100 pounds to, you know, all the way up to three or 400. Um, <clears throat> so take a look at what one that you can use. Just look for the recommendations. That one in the top left has a light ring. That's in that blog. If you can get one of a built-in light ring, that can be incredibly useful. And I'll tell you why shortly. Let me come on to microphones. I would say that out of all of the extra gear that you would need to buy, a microphone might be the most useful, mainly because onboard microphones in laptops and phones are pretty poor. Um, and especially if your microphone is located near the fan on your laptop, you'll get that cut in periodically, which is, is not very good for the user. Um, that microphone on the screen, which is the blue snowball, is what I'm using, except mine's orange. Um, and that is uh, sort of 50, 60 pounds worth of microphone. And again, pretty solid for what you get. That link has some more. Um, lighting um, in various forms. I would say LED lighting that's diffused or diffuse that, you know, is, is not um, well bright effectively it's, um, is what you need. You can get some lighting that can change the color and the temperature of the lighting. So whether it's got more orange or more blue in it. So again, could be very useful. Um, you're spoiled for choice on that one. Effectively, you just need a good light source. And in a few moments, I'll show you how you would need to work that one out. And then we look at some more kind of things like tripods and gimbals. If you're using a smartphone, um, your arm is going to ache after a period of time. So, you know, a tabletop uh, tripod or a gimbal, that handheld thing on the right there can be really good just to, you know, hold the camera, keep it steady. And when you are able to go more mobile, it helps you do that and maintain the quality of what it is you're doing. Uh, now, big, big caveat around this at the moment is that, well, stock is limited. Um, at the moment in time um, because everyone is running online to get this stuff. Um, my caution, and this is the buyer beware part, is don't pay over the odds if you can avoid it because some people are, um, well, uh, charging well over the odds for it because of that. They're taking advantage. So um, at this time, more than any of us, customers will forgive less than perfect production quality. So 
don't let not being able to buy a better camera or a better microphone Etsy stop you from starting this because actually just maintaining that content with contact with your user is more important, I would say. Okay, so we'll talk about some software really quickly. Um, the first one, OBS, Open Broadcast System, is a great free piece of software that you can get on Mac or Windows. Um, if you want to go more into live streaming or do some more intricate um, creations, this can help you have multiple channels. So multiple video, uh, different audio sources, you can hook that into Skype, um, various other networks, and you can even start to create different scenes. So you put your own visuals in, your own branding, your own styles. You can create some very professional looking things essentially for free. Um, and they've got a great community and lots of really great help guides that can really get you on your way. So I'd seriously look at that. Um, and then Audacity um, is uh, basically audio editing software, again, free for Windows and Mac. If you're recording um, any audio only stuff, so podcasts or, or just you know recordings, this can help you kind of capture the audio and edit the audio if you make any mistakes or you have any pops or, or any kind of audio kind of drops in quality you can use this to effectively get it looking right and this is a great point to sort of highlight that you know whilst this is now a live webinar to the people here who are watching it this will become a video the slides will become a separately hosted slide web uh, slide share and we can in theory then turn this into a podcast and keep you know spinning this piece of content off into others um, and i think what it's a great use of your time and effort to see how many pieces of content can this one piece go off to be because it maximizes the return and it helps you see the value in the effort, hopefully. So um, you don't need the software 100%, but um, again, we sort of said before, you've got any more complex or elaborate needs, these are free entry points into this. You can spend a lot of money on software, um, but you do not need to. Cool. So some extra hints and tips um, into actually setting this up. Um, so first things first, we'll talk about lighting. So I've, I've used myself as an example for this, which is a little bit disconcerting. Now I'm playing it back. But uh, make sure the brightest light source is in front of you, not behind. That image in front is well, me sat in front of a window and it's not watchable basically, um, or that wouldn't be as, as a, uh, a webcast. So your positioning is really important. Um, if you do need to improvise with extra lamps or lighting, a soft light is better because it reduces shadows. And again, make sure that light is in front of you. Um, you can sometimes use homemade diffusers to, to make the light softer. Um, so people quite often put sheets above windows or greaseproof paper or bits like that. Just a real health and safety warning, really. Don't put anything onto a hot bulb that might catch fire. That's just me doing my bit, but you know, some people do use that. Um, but the other thing is beware of natural light. I'm stood in front of an open window. Um, in about 20 minutes time, it's going to start to get dark. Um, and if I'm still here at that point, I won't be as easy to see as before. So just be conscious of things like sunrise, sunset, direction of that, because that will impact the lighting in your piece. Um, and from camera positioning perspective, you've got to make sure the camera is roughly at head height. You know, my laptop, just to give you full disclosure, is sat on top of two boxes, on top of a chest of drawers, and then on a laptop stand. But it is pretty much at eye level. Um, you also need to look at the screen. If, well, if you need to look at the screen, so I've got notes and all the webcasting stuff in front of me, you need to make sure the camera sits just above it. So even if I'm looking slightly off from the pinhole of the camera, I'm not kind of looking at a screen to the left or the right, which can be disconcerting. Um, and try and be mindful of the backgrounds where you can. If you can add plants, it sounds a bit cliched, but do so because it can make things better. And then the final one is dress. Dress yourself. Look appropriate. Um, I hate to I hate, uh, hasten to add I don't look like that all the time around the house, but you know, really simple stuff. If you're speaking to your customers or potential customers, what do they expect and hope for? Just be presentable. Um, just because we are always stuck at home doesn't mean you know webcasts need to be in pajama bottoms. Um, although what happens from the waist down is ultimately up to you. Cool. So they're the kind of the key setup tests. Um, the next one is you, you need to practice. This can be a steep learning curve for some because for many people getting on top of this, this isn't your day to day job. You're probably using new software and new platforms that are alien to you. you know, even someone like myself or us at Footprint, we are a very much a digital business. Um, we do not claim to specialize in this, although we are learning really quickly. So practice, 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 get a few test runs under your belt, you know, understand what the potential risks or disruptions can be and try and mitigate them where possible. You know, if you can record it in more than two ways than once, for example, record on more than two platforms. Um, if, you know, like today we moved the session back 15 minutes because four o'clock starts always caused us a problem because 
there was there tended to be an influx of people logging in uh, onto platforms like this at that time and actually today fingers crossed has been pretty smooth for that um, i'm waiting for someone to tell me otherwise via the chat but i'll continue until then um and then the real one is find your style and evolve it you know find your content find your audience um everyone will have their own styles to present some people won't like presenting with slides like this whereas i happen to like it others will do their own thing you know the best presentation and the best um, face you're always going to give to the stuff is what feels most natural to you and what works for you remember at the start when we asked you to reflect what what it was that you brought to people in your day-to-day -day interactions with your face-to-face -face encounters well make sure you bring that across too. you know just because people present in certain ways and in certain fashions doesn't mean that you have to do the same um, because if you're not being, you know, true to um, your um, kind of way of doing things, it is going to look, um, well, it's just not going to flow. It's not going to feel right. And your audience is going to know it. Um, and the other side is this content will be very new to your audience. Um, so again, just work out what works. Ask everybody what they thought of the session. Take feedback on board and adapt and adjust. This webinar wasn't on our radar until we had people ask for it. So we produced the content for it because we knew there was a need. So again, you'll need to react in the same way to your customers with that. Cool. So um, final section is we're going to talk about promotion of content, which is, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, is a massive area. So I probably I'm not going to do it the justice that maybe it needs to. But actually what I'll do is I'll give you a few pointers. Um, and then, of course, you know, questions, email me afterwards. We can kind of take that. Uh, in that direction if we need to. Um, the first one is you know, never undervalue um, your email lists and social media followings at this time, because for the vast majority of people, it's the best method of communication that you've got that will cost you well little to nothing. Um, so make sure you're utilizing those channels first. Um, give people chance to you know see that the event's coming up to plan to book but then remind them periodically that things are taking place via social media via email etc because you know people may get busy or may forget things so stay in contact with um, your existing following and make the most of that um, but if you do want to get it further afield than just that realize the value of opa or other people's audiences and what i mean by that is um, very often other communities other um, connections that you have will, will be able to unlock audiences to you that you don't have access to um, and this is really really critical at a time like this because it offers you know free exposure into new audiences um, and it's just great networking because actually if you're providing good content other people are going to want to you know expose their audiences to that too so it helps you get the word out further i mean it's good old-fashioned networking effectively but so many people forget that that just asking their connections and partners um associated businesses etc can really help um paid promotion can work um we've not paid to promote any of this um but it's not to say that we won't in the future small ver bursts of paid social media kind of um, promotion can really help amplify your posts quite significantly you know linkedin and facebook it's hard to get things going viral um if you're you know just a business starting this from scratch so you know 50 pounds 100 pounds even might, might not even need to be that much just to get it out to a new audience you'll you'll see that you'll well you'll get in front of hundreds if not thousands of new people with that post just on that budget and hopefully that will bring kind of 10 5 10 20 30 new people that have never heard of you before so you know, really kind of look at that and kind of tactical use of small bursts of paid can really really help you there um and then the follow-up is, you know, so much of the webinar value is, as I said before, what happens after it. So make sure the content is available online as soon as possible. Um, for me, that's tomorrow's activity is just making sure that I've uploaded this video and these slides and the, the content will come out to you all via email, which obviously sets a rod for me. I've got to make sure I get that done. But I think that's the least I can ask and the least that you can expect, given that you're giving me your time now. Um, and then in terms of the marketing of these, certainly to start with, focus on quality over quantity, especially to start with, because you, you're not going to get hundreds of thousands of people um, in this. You, you know, you, you might even be lucky to get tens of people to start with, but actually focus on who do you really want to be on this? Are they your 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 most loyal customers? Are they your prospects? Are they your trusted partners? Um, you know, go out and talk to them individually and, you know, get them to come on there if you if your time is short and your reach is low that can often be the most um important way to do it 
So that was a little bit of a, um, a content whirlwind, I would say, for you there. So if you're still with me, well done. Um, I, I didn't plan to put quite so much into this, but uh, I didn't have as much time to edit as I otherwise usually would have. Um, but some kind of final thoughts that are really kind of critical. I think you know when starting out this process, you know we're asking you to review what what you bring to the table. Um, but I'd also say, well, focus on content. Um, that people want to hear and see. You know, the first webinar in the series and the one that I ran yesterday, which talked about bringing your content online, one of the key things to think about there is, well, what do your customers need at this moment in time? And very often that's not being sold to. So, you know, these webinars aren't, and, and this software that you bring, uh, this content that you bring online is not going to be a sales tool directly, I would argue, because that's probably not what people want. Unless, of course, you're in e-commerce and you, you know, you're providing eggs or toilet roll or something, in which case they probably just want your product. Um, but also be okay if something isn't perfect for now. Don't let, you know, lack of perfection stop you or slow you down realistically. You know, as long as the content is good and of value, the, the format will kind of evolve and get better over time. These webinars are becoming smoother than when we started the process. And I hope that, that will continue to be the case. Um, also, don't be put off if your initial reach is low. You know, set your expectations accordingly. I'm, you know, just be happy with the people who turn up. And if it's something that you, you get good feedback and you're aware you're passing, you you know, you're providing value, keep on at it. It will take you time to build your audience and for word to get out that what you're offering is good. Um, and when you know when the recording button stopped make sure that you have this content and use it to push it over and over again make the most out of the content um, that you're producing um, and it will reward you um and you know for anyone who's started the process and you know maybe done one or two and thinking this is hard i need some tips trust me it does get easier as you go along so just just persevere and and stick to it where you can so that that's it um, that that's kind of the main uh, content for today as i said before there was a a bit of a a general um overview of the whole process so i've covered quite a lot of grand, ground i would say um so now is the opportunity if you've got any questions um please drop them uh into the live chat on the right um and if you can't think of anything now or you want to ask at a later date without anyone seeing then please um drop me an email my email is chris.green at footprintdigital.co.uk ah ty's put in a uh, the other email address if you want to get in touch there. Um, I also think that any emails you've received from Click Meeting, um, the reply to address will be my email. So um, please send it back. Um, that'd be fine. And uh, yeah, thanks, Alec. I'm glad we covered what you need. Good. I hope you've got some value out of today. Um, I'll give everyone a few moments uh, just to, to type or add anything in if you want, um, which means that I've got to fill some dry air, as they call it. But I can see people are typing, so that's a good sign. Um, <clears throat> just a note on the the lighting point of view, actually, while we're on it, um, it, it can be very easy to get obsessed via that. Um, there are some fantastic guides online around the positioning of lighting, um, which, you know, some would make you believe that you have to have, you know, three different sources of light, you know, one from the front, one from the side, one from the angle on the rear, and with different colours and temperature. Um, some of this stuff can work really well. But again, I would stress that it's not really essential. The one that you the piece of lighting that you really need is the one that is in front of your face, um, and it is diffuse. Um, and for anyone that gets a little squeamish, that does tend to show warts and all. So the better lit you are in a 4K camera, um, some people may start worrying about their appearance slightly more, but uh, it's worth it just to get a clear face. So um, fantastic. Well, I'm going to leave that for here for now. I think we've just had a few other messages. Thank you just to say that you've uh, you've taken a lot from today, which is good. But as I said before, um, email is open. Let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Chris Green 87, uh, Chris Green 87 on LinkedIn. Um, and you can also find um these webinars um on the website and we have a mailing list so subscribe um well if you want to hear more from us basically because we'd love to hear more from you and until the next time oh reminder final reminder tomorrow's session we are hosting a rerun effectively or a live rerun sorry of our um uh, helping remote working under these kind of circumstances. So uh, do tune in for that one. Details should be emailed out automatically after this event, but they will also be on our website and Eventbrite. Um, and yeah, just stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. Um, support each other. Um, and yeah, we will see you next time. Thank you.